Hey everyone, today I am making a video on how to apply audio filters to OBS. The same settings apply to both OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. The first thing is to understand the audio mixer. By default, the mixer will display desktop audio and microphone slash auxiliary audio. The first thing we will be doing is looking at the microphone filters. So what we will do is click the cogwheel on the right side of the mixer under mic auxiliary audio. A menu will appear and from there we will click filters. Once that's done, from here we will click the plus icon in the bottom left hand of the screen. Another menu will appear with a list of all the filters that you can apply from compressor, expander, gain, invert polarity, limiter, noise gate, noise suppression, and VST2 plugin. So the first filter we will be applying is noise suppression. So you'll click that and it will pop up a text for you to name the filter. Now by default it will say noise suppression. In my case noise suppression 2 as I already have a noise suppression filter. So we're going to click OK, and from here we'll see this slider. In OBS Studio, you'll see a decibel here, whereas in Streamlabs OBS, it will just say negative 30. Negative 30 is a default, and depending on how loud your background audio is, is depending on how high or how low you want your suppression level to be, all the way from 0 decibels to negative 60 decibels. In my case, I'm sitting beside a window unit, so I have a lot of background audio. So for me personally, I will take the noise suppression all the way down to negative 60 decibels to eliminate as much background noise as humanly possible. Most cases, the negative 30 setting will be sufficient. If you add in an audio filter that you wish to remove, simply select the audio filter, go down beside the plus symbol and click the negative symbol. The next mic filter that we will talk about is gain. Once more we're going to click the plus icon and we're going to select gain. If you speak at a low volume and you're trying to make yourself louder you're going to want to increase the gain. This will increase the volume. If you talk loudly Increasing or decreasing the gain can also result in higher pitchier sounds or lower muffled sounds. Lastly, we're going to talk about the VST plugins. VST plugins are downloaded from third party sources online. The one that I'm using is Marvel GEQ. So, in order to add a VST, you're going to click the plus icon, click VST2 plugin, and a drop down will appear here. In my case, Marvel GEQ is the only plugin that I have. So you would select this and open plugin interface. So here I will open the plugin interface for Marvel GEQ. This allows me to fine tune bass, mids, and treble. Marvel GEQ comes with a list of presets from brighter and bassy, presence, side bass removal, mids boost, lo-fi, and ultra bass boost. My recommendation is that you play with these until you find the one that suits your voice the best. So now that we've got that taken care of, we're gonna close that and we're gonna move on to desktop audio. Desktop audio is accessed through the cogwheel here. We click filters and it looks identical. We can click the plus icon down here and once more we will see that the same filters appear for desktop that appear for your microphone. I'm going to be adding a compressor. Compressors are used to automatically compress in audio. In my case, whenever I'm streaming on Twitch, I have a tendency to play music. So that is why I have added a compressor. I'm going to open Spotify and play music in the background both without and then with my compressor. So first, I'm going to play a clip of music without the compressor enabled. This is what it sounds like whenever I'm speaking with music or in-game audio is playing in the background without the compressor. Now we're going to re-enable the compressor and we're going to play that clip of music again, this time with the compressor. 
so you'll notice as soon as I start speaking, the volume indicator on the desktop audio immediately dropped from approximately negative 10 to negative 15 decibels, all the way down to negative 35 decibels. This makes it easier for whoever's listening to me to be able to hear me. So the compressor has a ratio, a threshold, attack, release, output gain, and sidechain ducking. So before I go into explaining all these, I'm going to start off by showing you the default compressor settings. We have the ratio set to 10 to 1, threshold set to negative 18 decibels, the attack is set to 6 milliseconds, the release is set to 60 milliseconds, output gain at 0 decibels with no sidechain or ducking. I have modified my compressor to reflect that 15 to 1 for the ratio, negative 40 for the decibels, 1 millisecond for the attack, 1000 milliseconds for the release, and I am sidechain ducking my microphone. So the first thing we need to understand is that ratio is how much compression occurs. So in an example, a ratio of 3 to 1 reduces the level of sound by three bars from whatever you are compressing. Threshold is where the compressor will begin to take into effect. Once more, in my case, my compressor is set to kick in at negative 30. Now, whenever my volume slider reaches negative 30 decibels, my desktop audio will immediately begin to reduce. You can control how quickly this happens with the attack slider. By setting my attack to one millisecond, almost instantaneously upon reaching that threshold of negative 30, it begins to reduce the volume of my desktop. If I were to raise this all the way up to 500 milliseconds, it would take that long before the compressor kicked in and began reducing audio from my desktop. The release is the exact opposite of the attack. It determines how long in milliseconds it's going to take for the audio to begin to come back from the compressed source. In my case, I have mine maxed out at 1000 milliseconds. This affords me the opportunity to take a moment and breathe without having to worry about my audio bouncing right back in. Next, we have output gain. It's not recommended that this is increased or decreased. Zero decibels is the preferred setting. Last off, we have sidechain ducking. In this case, we're focusing on ducking my microphone. So you select this drop down menu, and from here, you will see a list of multiple audios. In my case, I have all these from different scenes, but the one that we're focusing on is microphone and auxiliary. By clicking this, the compressor understands that it will only lower the desktop audio based off of volume levels from my microphone. Once you have finished with your settings, you can close that out. As with any time you make changes to your audio, it is recommended that you test out your new audio settings so that you don't have to make adjustments mid-production. This will allow you to know what your audio is going to sound like when you're streaming, talking through a video, and as always just a good and safe practice. I really hope this video helped you understand how to make audio adjustments to your OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS.